Well, hi everybody. I'm Consumer Donnelly from Creative Passages. Thank you for tuning in to me. I'm here in my bedroom because my art shed is really, really cold. It's not heating properly, probably because it's not insulated. <laughs> um, and the temp here in Virginia right now is about mm, 35 or so. So, and my the temp in the shed is probably around 30. No, it's not 30. It's maybe around 55. Um, so I moved a lot of my craft stuff here in the bedroom just temporarily. Today I want to show you some papers that I made. And I spent most of yesterday, today Sunday, <laughs> the 20th, the 21st. I spent uh, most of yesterday just making these papers that I'm going to include in my trauma journal. You could put this in any type of journal. So I want to explain to you a little bit how I made these and inspire you to create your own. I'm using tea bags, alcohol inks, um, book pages, stamps, washi, pan pastels, three sets of watercolor um, sets, sumi ink, um, collage materials, including my own art. Um, this one has ribbons and buttons on it and some yarn that I hand stitched. I'm not really a sewer or a hand stitcher, so this is sort of new for me. You don't get to see me do that part, but you'll see me add a few embellishments, including some tea bags. Um, I'm using mixed media paper, copy paper, um, 20 pound drawing paper. This is an old hymn book. Um, you're going to see me like mix things up in different ways. Ink pens, pencils, Stablia woodies. I'm going to use a gold charcoal pencil, really thick one. Here's some more tea bags. I had a little ink spill, but like I, I, I just made it work, even though the ink spilled. In fact, that's what, that's what this one was. Some fiber papers. This is another tea bag. Um, and I just making lots of different things. I tried to make some neutrals. I really generally make bright colors. So all this stuff is going to be incorporated into my trauma journal. I could also incorporate into other artwork. This was the catch for the alcohol inks. I incorporated them into some of my art. I, I just, this one's one of my favorites. Um, using all kinds of stamps, scripted stamps and flowers and ones that look like little nets. And this one is made with the alcohol inks, and, which I spray with uh, alcohol spritzer. This one's also got the ink tents in them. And then this is a little collage. You're gonna see me make this. I probably spent the most time on this one in the video. I'm gonna have everything um, sped up to about four times and then I'm going to narrate the whole thing. So I hope you stay tuned and enjoy the show. Oh, and a Posca marker. I use one Posca marker. Oh, and a chalk, a gold chalk writer too. I'm using all kinds of things, but the whole point of it is just to inspire you to create art no matter what you have on hand. Maybe you don't have all the different types of things that I have, but hopefully I'll be showing you enough um, approaches that you can maybe use what you do have on hand to create art that you can later incorporate into your journal either as a tag or bookmark or a journal card or a pocket or maybe part of your chapter or chapter tab or just maybe the art page itself um all this all these papers can be incorporated into your journal. Like I'm, I'm getting excited about using this. And usually for me, like the journal making process is not, each page is not done in one day. Um, I usually like to have all kinds of art on hand that I can incorporate into the pages. And I think it's more fun and more personal that way too. So hopefully you find some set techniques that you like that you can incorporate as well. All right, stay tuned. All right, so this is my first project. You don't really see me make all of it, but I use this little package from the Dollar Tree of some different fiber papers and decorative papers 
there's one that's pink with some white flecks on it that I used. I added my own uh, collage scraps or some watercolor paper, the, the golden one, the two ones on each side were some watercolor scraps. I went in hand sewed some yarn and some um, <clears throat> string from a leather sewing kit and I used a really thick needle to put through the paper and I also used some mulberry paper which I added to it um, and some lace ribbon which I cut down to fit and now I want to use my Windsor and Newton metallic set to go back over um, and add some more blue tones to I don't know complement the pink also there is the Talons and Gore opaque watercolor pan set that I used to color it it's a set that my daughter got me for Christmas that's the one that you see with all the pinks and the fleshy colors it's a skin tone set and she got it for me so um, I could do portraits so I'm going back over the, sort of the yellow watercolor papers and also there's some scraps of some tea bags in this as well that I'm using the metallic paint sets on too. Just kind of playing around with color here and I'm going back over that little lace ribbon with the blue metallic paint. I really was hoping there would be a pink metallic paint in here but there wasn't. So, but I think blue's a pretty color. The white just seemed like it stood out a little bit too much. And I also sewed a button on here. And um, I'm not really good at stitching or sewing, but I did my best. This is another piece you didn't see me make, but I used some scripting stamps and some flower stamps. And that paint set that my daughter got. And I think it's really pretty. And I did it on a mixed media paper that I got from a little uh, set that came as a gift in my art package, you know, when I bought some supplies as a thank you. I love it. I could maybe use that little journal um, for mixed media and like collages. So now I'm taking a piece of Hammer Mill um, multi-purpose paper. It's 20 pounds. It was eight and a half by 14, but I cut it down and I'm using the set that my daughter got me. You can see that the colors are really, really pretty. So the other smaller one, I started off with the stamps first. And I used a permanent ink. I used a midnight blue stays on. And for this one, um, I'm starting off with the watercolors. And this one actually is going to turn into a collage. Although I wasn't sure at the time that I started it. I was thinking I was going to go back and add some um, stamps and stuff to it, but I ended up liking it so much that I never did that. I mean, I liked it the way it was. Not that I don't like adding stamps. So I'm just playing around with color. I love the pinks. And I also have some golden gold acrylic paint. And I found a little object that makes some round shapes. So I just want to play around with making round dots now when you're making decorative you know painted papers for future work like in journals or collage making repetitive lines and in, in shapes is a good idea um but i didn't like the way this went on it went too thick and globby so i am wiping it off with the paper towel and i actually like it better now that it's not so globby even though some of it spread out so now i'm adding some washi to it i love incorporating washi into collages and and also i love washi just for decorative touches to my journals they're so much fun i just ordered some more washi from tamu tamu has pretty good prices on things and usually i'll, I'll get a set of it or i'll go to michael's and sometimes they have it on sale um you can get sometimes get one for 99 cents so this is a thicker one um you can't really see it i'm a little off camera and i'm um, off angle I should say I'm sorry about that um, and the lighting in my room is not that great I did this in the evening time well really I was working all day but by the time you see me making this it's sort of in the evening so that's some mulberry paper I just put down I have different colors of it and it's a lacy mulberry paper and I just love texture 
in fabric scraps that is a tea bag so i'm putting that's a round tea bag so i'm incorporating the tea bags in here and this is actually my first time incorporating tea bags so basically after i drink my tea i will squeeze out the extra um water and then i will let it dry and then i will put it once it's dry put it in another little bag and then basically just cut it open or you can rip it open if you're careful and um then of course you take the tea out and then um you can paint it or decorate it or maybe glue it all together um to make a long piece of paper these are just a little tea bag scraps so this is uh, actually alcohol um not alcohol acrylic ink and it's a shimmering blue color it's from dale romney so now i'm going back to the watercolor set my daughter got me and i'm just painting the tea bags with some pinks and some magenta colors i thought it might be complimentary for the lighter pink that i have for most of the page And I'm really having a lot of fun for this particular piece. So now I'm going back and adding the metallics with the Winsor Newton set. And I will put a link to all these supplies in the description if you're interested in any of them. That watercolor set my daughter got me, I was looking it up because I didn't know, she didn't know what she got me. But it's a $20 set and it has really good reviews and I highly recommend it. It's very nice. So now I'm going back and adding more washi. That's my favorite washi right there with the, the pink and the peachy colors. And it's a little bit kind of see-through. I love the idea of like transparent papers. Now I'm adding a china marker to it. And I'm also adding a peachy woody pencil. And now I'm adding more sort of like a bluish purple woody pencil. I think it actually shows up a little bit better. I sort of play around with water soluble stuff versus um, like wax resist crayons. I have some Karen Dinesh crayons I'm going to be using too. So this is more, I believe is more mulberry paper, but it doesn't have the lacy holes in there. So right now I'm using a glue stick instead of Mosh Podge, which I normally use, because I'm thinking I'm going to keep things as dry as possible. So I can go back later and add stamps, which of course I never did. So I want to add some tissue paper to that. And by the way, that glue stick is, I guess it doesn't really matter what kind of glue stick it was, but it is, I wrote this down, I thought. I guess I didn't. Anyway, it's, uh, I don't know, Elmer's Craft Barn or something. So it's that some darker magenta. It's not really magenta, it's more of like a plum color. And actually, I'm, later I'm going to add some of that acrylic paint and little flecks of it and it looks really pretty on top of that that uh dark plum color and that's some napkins that i'm using as well and generally when you want to use napkins that there's like three plies and you just have to take the two off and so get down to one ply so i decided it really did need some mosh posh and so i'll just like i'm still thinking i might add some stamps but i just decided i gonna have to wait because I want things to be adhered on there really well and the glue stick you know only did so much so now I'm adding those gold flecks with the acrylic paint and later I go back and dilute it some but at this point I don't think I had and I'm also adding some yarn that's kind of old that I got from the Dollar Tree and then more mulberry paper Like I said, this piece was a lot of fun. And there's a little trick. Like, of course, the Mosh Posh will hold down those little yarn pieces and, and strings. But sometimes you can go and take a collage piece and kind of put it over part of your yarn or your ribbon and adhere it a little bit better. So I sometimes do that. And I like the look of that. 
So these are just more mulberry pieces, I believe, really thin mulberry pieces. And so I'm mostly like using the pinks and the peachy colors for this pink and peach or, you know, melon, rusty kind of dusty pink. Those are all some of my favorite colors. Well, I like turquoise a lot too. So this is a random piece that doesn't really have a match, but uh, I stuck it in there and I'm going to make it match a little bit better by adding some pink paint to it, watercolor paint. I'm going to add another piece of that pink yarn that's got, you know, a little fluff to it. I love, like, soft yarn and, and just texture. I love the texture. So these are some circle fiber papers I got. I'm not even sure what kind of paper it is. But they're, they were kind of fancy. But um, I'm going to use them and... Then later I'm going to paint them with the watercolors just to kind of blend things in a little bit better. Oh, the white doesn't look too bad. I just like it better after I paint it. I'm going to paint it a dark pink. So this, the circles come in like one large sheet where they're all sort of attached to each other. But I just kind of rip them out the best I can and try to keep the circle intact. So now I'm going back over it with the dark pink sort of like magenta and the watercolors now remember these watercolors are a little bit more opaque than other watercolors but they're not that opaque you can still kind of see through it and actually the last watercolor set i ended up getting was also opaque. you'll see me use that a little bit later the other uh set is secure tape gansey tombi watercolors with the art nouveau um, colors. All right, so now I want to show you how I do the tea bags. I'm using some alcohol inks, and these are Picasso alcohol inks. I don't like them as much as the Ranger inks, but since I'm experimenting, I didn't want to use my nicer ones. So I have a piece of paper underneath, a copy paper that printed out with some lines on it, and I'm I'm using that to catch the alcohol inks, and I'm also dabbing some tissue paper on top of it. Because I don't want the colors to be so intense, I'm actually taking a smaller tea bag and also dab dabbing some of those extra alcohol ink colors on top of it to make it less intense. And then, then I'm misting it with 50% alcohol spray. Trying to get just the right amount of colors so they're not absolutely that intense. And so now I'm going to take a second piece of tea bags. Which the tea bags are, are fun to use. Basically, uh, after I drink my tea, I just squeeze out the extra moisture and water, let it dry, and then I'll, I'll start collecting them once they're dry in a little plastic bag, a Ziploc bag for my art. And then you can just cut them open and take all the tea out. And then you have these wonderful, cute little papers that you can make art out of. This is my first time actually trying to do anything with the tea bags. So that's why I'm kind of going tea bag crazy. So alcohol ink seemed like a lot of fun to just try to play around with to get these, you know, beautiful colors. So I'm using magenta, I'm using a plum color, I'm using some pinks, I'm using dark blue. Yeah, um, all these little dabs look like flowers. Um, and this, like the catch-all paper, ends up being one of my favorites. Um, it just turns out really, really pretty. So I don't like this Picasso one because it leaked out and I think maybe it's user error. I didn't realize till recently that um, there's, a, the, there's a little hole in the lid and you got to line up your nozzle just right to get it closed properly. And so I don't think I was doing that. I think I was just screwing it on. And then uh, when I opened it up, a lot of the alcohol ink had spilled out and a lot of them actually were dried up in the nozzles too so I got alcohol ink all over my hands and then I had to take a little needle and poke open a lot of the holes so it was just a lot of trouble um so ranger inks are better but since I was experimenting like I said I used the Picasso set
I mean, they're okay, but you just keep those things in mind. Close it properly. Um, whoops, there goes some Sumi ink that I accidentally spilled, but you know what? I'm going to make it work. I, I tried to actually see if I could dip my stamp in there, but that quite didn't work right. Um, but I dabbed some more uh, tea bags into it and also some tissue paper. So I'm combining some black blobs with the bright colors just for a little contrast. And now I'm going to act like I purposely meant to make that ink drip. And I'm going to dip my wooden pen um, into the Sumi ink. I have a bigger bottle, but I put it in a small bottle just because it's really easy to knock over. And I'm glad I, I never knocked over my large bottles, namely because I'm using my small bottle. So I have these fiber papers in the circles. I have a set with the white around the edges and a black around the edges. And I thought the black one would look really nice on top of that big blob of ink. Sumi ink. So this is not necessarily my style, but it looks kind of cool. And I'm sure I can mm -hmm. find a use for that piece of paper right there. So now I'm going to use my ink tense pencils on my 20 pound multi-purpose paper and I'm using the set of watercolors that my daughter got me that I really love and also these are some new watercolor scents that I'm also using they are Curate Gonzi Tambi watercolor sets there's a set of 24 colors and Art Nouveau colors so now I'm adding some ink tents pencils to it as well some yep yellow and some blues and some browns so this is the Curate Gonzi Time Bee watercolor set it's Art Nouveau colors instead of 24 so I'm using that now and the colors are really pretty and I'm adding it to the catch-all paper for the alcohol inks and like I said, this is one of my very favorites. I think it looks like a beautiful little garden of flowers. And it's so pretty. So I might just scan it by itself before I rip it up or alter it and incorporate it into something else. Because it's so pretty. So I'm adding some greens and some blues and just different colors that I thought would be complementary to all those pinks and and magenta colors and blues now i'm also adding that other watercolor set that my daughter got me which again is the talons angora opaque watercolor pan set in the exclusive skin tones so now i'm using a black posca pen and i'm going to attempt to do neutral colors which is not natural for me so i'm using the ink tents sort of a yellowish brown color to put in between the Posca pen and I didn't wait for it to dry so I'm going to go back and add water and of course the Posca pen is bleeding out but I think that looks kind of cool it's a cool look I, I really do like it it's kind of edgy looking I'm sure I'll find a place for it in my trauma journal so the thing about trauma journals you can do uh, darker colors and ugly art to kind of convey your trauma so that that's one thing kind of fun is that uh even ugly art is relevant and useful when you're doing something like a drama journal so this is my second attempt at doing a neutral piece on that 20 pound mixed it's not mixed media multi-purpose paper so i'm using grays blacks and yellow browns and I'm trying to keep this one simple because you probably noticed that I have a tendency to go overboard with details. There was a little tiny piece of green on the paper accidentally. So I just had to incorporate it in and make it look like it was meant to be there. So, so much for neutrals. That's earthy. Okay, so now I'm going back with another 20 pound paper with my ink tents, pencils, and doing some circular shapes and some crisscrosses. And now I'm going back with sort of a yellow orangey brown color and um, some black watercolor paint and some yellow brown colors so again this one's going to look a little bit earthy as well but I'm really trying hard to keep it neutral so blacks and browns are really pretty 
So I do like this piece. And I spritz it with some alcohol spray. Again, that's 50%. Although I don't think that really matters. So now I'm going to do some crisscrosses with my ink tense pencils. And I have a dark blue, which I thought was black, but it was sort of bluish purple. So then I grabbed another color, which was black. So I'm adding the light gray to it since the colors themselves were already dark. And I'm... Um, of course, they're watercolor pencils, so they're going to all blend in. And I think this is kind of pretty, too. I'm spritzing it again with the alcohol. I wanted salt, but I, I misplaced my salt. I have so many things out on my desk, it's hard to see. So now I'm going to mess with my Distress Oxide stamps and ink. Um, and that kind of ink will fade a little bit it gets activated by water but i want to play around with it it doesn't completely go away when you you spray it uh, or get wet stuff on top of it so i use some scripting um, stamps and now i'm using my ink tense pencils and i'm making some round circular shapes and now i'm going back over it with a karen dinash crayon a yellow crayon a number one crayon the wax resist one and now i'm going over it with the number two karen dinesh crayons these are really nice crayon sets the number one of course will um, stay put when you put anything wet over top of it the number two is water soluble so it'll spread out so i'm playing around with the wax resist adding the water soluble crayons over top of the wax resist crayons and then dipping my brush in water and going back over the whole thing to um, make this pretty piece of paper and you can kind of see what happened with the distress oxide inks as well they faded just slightly so now i'm going to use some stencils that's actually a mat that you can um, use to put under uh, like when when you're lining your cabinets and stuff I'm using that as a stencil and then I've got some regular stencils too and I'm using it with the pan pastels. For me, um, pan pastels are the easiest thing to use with the stencil to get kind of a clear, even consistent color. So now I'm going back over it with some magenta well, that I'm just splattering over top of it and I think it looks kind of pretty. And I'm, again, I'm a little off camera there so I apologize for that. Um, and I'm think that the purple and the blues could use some bright yellow so i'm adding some bright yellow so now i want to show you how i use the stays on ink so this is the kind of ink that is going to stay in place and the stays on ink is permanent and i'm going to use a bunch of script stamps i have like three different ones that i use and what i'm going to do is play around in changing the position um, i'm going to place it on different horizontal and vertical positions and then that stamp right there is a smaller script stamp it's kind of like a messy writing and so um, i'm playing around with all these stamps and i'm also using one that looks sort of like um, a net and then i'm going to use some flower stamps so this is in the midnight blue stays on ink and then once i get done with all the stamping then i'm going to add the watercolor paints so mm -hmm. it's best to do the permanent ink stamps first and then paint over it if you don't want to wait that long otherwise if you do the watercolors first you're going to have to wait for the watercolors to dry before you add the ink if you want the what you just did to stay put now if you want it to bleed now that's fine so um again this is kind of a cool technique to make some papers and also I had some border stamps that I'm also using some decorative like edges. So I'm kind of filling in, you know, the blank spaces with the different stamps and pretty much filling up the whole paper with the, the stamps. So now I'm going to go back over it with the watercolor sets that my daughter got me, which are so pretty. So I'm using pinks and purples. I'm sorry, I like pinks and peaches and purples. And most of these papers with the watercolor, I'm spritzing with alcohol. It just adds a little bit of texture. 
and color variation which I find interesting um, and again I just misplaced my salt which also will crystallize if you add it to your watercolors so now I'm adding some peach and some magenta and I'm using it on copy paper and not the 20 pound paper so it's crinkling up a little bit but that's okay I might even mamagami it uh, I like to use lighter papers for these you can also use old books and hymnals the book I got at a thrift store the hymn book was just gifted to me from a co-worker So I'm going to start off with the book page and I'm adding some yellow pan pastels through a stencil and some script stamps with Distress Oxide inks. That's blue and a peach and I have a smaller stamp that's kind of like a netting and now I'm going to add some washi to this. Um, there's not going to be a lot of collage but just a little bit of washi different places just to kind of make it more interesting again i just love washi i think it's it's really cute and even though this by itself maybe doesn't make a lovely work of art i think that it could make a really cute little pocket and again i probably embellish it more once i incorporate it into my journal i can you know ink around the edges or i could cut this out into you know another shape or I could add laces to it or material scraps or just even more color um, but I have something to kind of start with or again I could just tear a piece off and use it as a collage in an art journal page so I'm adding some of the flower stamps to this and now I'm going to go back with my Art Nouveau watercolor set and added some yellows to kind of blend in but they blended too much so I'm adding some pink as well and then I'm going to splatter some blue to kind of match the blue uh, splatters on that washi tape so again this isn't that pretty by itself but it'll make something nice I'm sure in my journal so now I'm using some old hymns this is a, a page from a hymn book and I'm using a key stamp and I'm adding some permanent ink stays on ink midnight blue and I decided to use the key to remind me that I can take authority over any situation that that comes my way um, spiritually speaking I know that um, God gives me the strength to overcome and so the keys remind me that uh, God has given me the keys of the kingdom and I thought that would be good to remind myself, and this is for my trauma journal, so that will be a source of strength and inspiration and encouragement to me. So now I'm also adding these little flower stamps, and they don't go on perfectly, but that's okay. Uh, this is probably going to be incorporated into something else, so I'm going back with more stencils. And again, I find it easier to use the pan pastels with the stencils. This is kind of like a messy abstract stencil. And I'm also going to use this cute little dot stencil. And I used sort of a pink color in the pan pastels. And now I'm going to go back to Distress Oxide inks. I'm putting um, a brown stamp that's almost like um, a little tag. Like, like you could use it for a tag, but I'm just using it for lines. And I'm adding some washi again to this. And that pink peachy one is my favorite of all the washies that I have. And I'm thinking about using the tissue paper, but I really think it just fell there and I don't I don't use it. But I am going to incorporate more washi. Here's a wider piece of washi that's got script on it. It's got some flowers on it. It's sort of a beige color with sort of a purpley brown color on it as well. And now I'm attempting to go neutral again I'm using this like beige color for it and I'm also adding some pink again that shade of pink is one of my favorites sort of like a light peachy pink 
All right, I'm back in the shed, but only for a little bit because it gets too cold in here. I do have a heater, but the shed is not insulated, um, so it doesn't it doesn't stay too warm if the temp goes below 30. So what I want to show you is this. This is methyl cellulose from the candlemakerstore.com and I'm going to use this to put on top of this to keep this from sticking to anything else. So what you want to do is just take some water. I don't have a sink here so I'm going to pour the water into a container. Alright, now you're going to take your cellulose and you're going to pour that in there. It takes very little cellulose. So you see how much water, I don't know if you can see how much water I have. I'm going to start with just a sprinkle in my hands. And then I'm going to mix it up. I'm not sure if I should use it. I've got a stick I'm going to use to mix it. It's going to start getting really thick. If I put enough in there. Normally I put too much. Let's do just a teeny tiny bit more. Another sprinkle. Okay, I'm sure that's plenty. You don't have to be too precise with this. Yep, that's getting nice and thick in there. You might not get all the lumps out, and that's okay. So now what I'm going to do, this is glue. This is cellulose glue. And it's really safe and non-toxic. I'm going to take a brush. I'm going to dip it in here. Okay. i got an, I got a really good consistency. It might get thicker, though. Now, if you get it too thick, you can just wipe it on as a paste. I'm going to just put this on here, and it is going to stick everything together. If they're not stuck that well, it's going to make it stick well. But also, what I've discovered about this glue, almost by accident or haphazardly, is that the glue, like if I was to mama got me this, which I debated on doing, but I don't know if I should because of the the string, the yarn that I have in there. But if it wasn't for that, I would probably try to mamagami this. And what would happen is it probably end up sticking to itself as I folded it up. But this cellulose glue actually keeps it from sticking. Now I don't know if you've ever had like your journal pages stick together. Sometimes you put wax paper in between to keep it from sticking. But this, if you rub the cellulose glue on top of it, I believe that it's going to keep it from sticking. It has, uh, with mine, I was able to, you know, do mamagami and uh, not have things stick together and put it in my journal and not have the pages stick together. So I'm just, there's a little bit of stuff that got in here. This will be really, really nice. I'm so excited to use it. That'll have to be a, a different journal though. Yeah. So you can see how this is like getting thicker, okay? It's getting thicker. So we'll come back to that once it dries. I wanted to show you this first collage I made in really good lighting. It's one of my very favorites. Again, I'm going to incorporate it into my journal. And I'm just really happy about it. I'll probably maybe add some inking to the edges or maybe more lace or something like that. But I really like it. All right, let's take a look at these final images. There's one of the tea bags. There's another tea bag. <laughs> I love the tea bags. that one. This 
one. Let's see if we can get a better look at it. There we go. This is better. We've got this tissue paper right here. Love that. 